Hey guys, Scott and Vanessa Martindale here with Blended Kingdom Families. At BKF, we believe now is the time to change the modern day interpretation of the blended family. Absolutely, you guys. As a blended family ourselves, God laid it on our hearts to build a ministry that helps support blended families by equipping your marriage, uniting the family unit, and igniting your faith. Our mission is that you would be touched by God and experience His goodness through this ministry, that your family would have practical skills, resources, and tools to help you live that abundant blended life. Hey guys, welcome to the BKF Podcast. We are so, so excited you're here with us today. Before we get started, please take a minute, subscribe to our channel. We would love to alert you when new podcasts come available and uh, all of those good things that come with that. So today... Today, we have two amazing guests with us, you guys, Mo and Paige Becknell. And welcome, you guys. We're so excited to have you all here with us. Thank Thank you so much. We're excited to be here with you guys. Oh, thank you. Well, you guys, I just want to tell you a little bit about Mo and Paige. They are natives of New Orleans, Louisiana, and reside in Larkspur, Colorado. So they're up north right now getting a lot of snow in the cold. Um, They married in 1989, blending a family of five children. They, um, 27 years later, We have a lot to learn from them. 27 27 years years married. Y'all are like two decades ahead of us. Actually, actually, we've been married. uh, It'll be 32 years. Oh, wow. When did we miss that one? 32. Okay. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. (laughs) Well, and late. It is amazing. (laughs) Well, their family's grown to include 10 grandchildren. I mean, that's just wow. I bet you guys are busy and having so much fun. So... Well, well, they also founded Blending a Family Ministry in 2002 and served as the singles pastors for 12 years at a local church in Baton Rouge. Currently, the marriage pastors at the Rock Church of Castle Rock in Colorado mm-hmm. and facilitators for Colorado Center for, for Relationship Education. Um, they are the authors of God Breathes on Blended Families book, workbook, and devotional. And um, you guys, we're going to dive into that a little bit, but this book was life-giving yeah. to us um, oh. in our blended family. So we just are, we're very excited for y'all to be here. Um, and currently, um, like I said, they're the authors, facilitators, um, Center for Relationship Ed- Education, Denver, Col- Colorado, and Marriage Mentor. So you guys, again, welcome and thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. It's an honor. Yeah. Thank you for your friendship. And it is, it really was a pleasure getting to know you. Not only was your book amazing, um, and we've just loved getting to know you. We've loved getting to know your heart for blended families. Um, so tell us a little bit more about you guys, uh, your family situation, um, a little bit more about your marriage and your love for blended families. Okay. (laughs) So we, uh, we started off uh, a rocky road, um, as many blended families do, and that's after we recovered. That's why uh, the Holy Spirit said, you need to write a book, what, what I showed you. Mm. And uh, that's what we did in the year 2000. And then we started teaching classes in year 2002, mm. and uh, we, we've been mentoring couples since. Mm. I love that. How has that experience been mentoring couples? What has that experience meant to you guys? Well, we try to give um, the same wisdom that God gave us to them. And uh, the work, we have a workbook and the workbook walks a couple through the the book that you just showed Mm -hmm. chapter by chapter. And the reason we did that is because a couple came to us and said, okay, it works for you. How does it work for us? Uh-huh. Yep. And so that workbook walks them through and asks them questions and uh, get, engages them talking to each other about where their pitfalls are versus where our pitfalls were. Yeah. 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 No, that's good. Anytime we have, um, we have people reach out every day, but a lot of people will ask for resources and I your book is number one I mean I always like God reads on but because it's one of the only I think scripturally based books that I could and I remember when I found it and it was much it was years later after you guys wrote it but 
Um, I remember like, I don't know how I found it, but I was like, where has this been my, our entire blended family journey? Because it was just like gold to yeah. us. So I just love the title. Like yeah. to me, the title speaks the volumes of what we need to be speaking about. Mm -hmm. It's that God is breathing, blessing. He loves blended families and that's okay. Um, and I, I think a lot of blended families don't, they don't know that. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I'm just so thankful for the title of the book and I hope people who see it, read it, um, that's what they take away from that. Yeah. Well, you guys today, we, you know, we, you, ha you guys ha obviously have a lot of wisdom. You've been doing this for so long. And so, you know, there's a lot of things that we could talk about, but I think one thing, you know, that we would love to talk about is one of, you know, the challenges that remarried couples can face when, you know, they go into blending a family, even mm -hmm. if it's been years down the road. I know we're, we're going on, um, we're, we're in our seventh year going into our eighth. It's been that long, huh? It's been, it, well, yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> But, um, and I remember Scott saying the other day that he read this stat that the seventh year is the hardest. And I was like, well, we were like, we're going to make the seventh year the easiest, um, yeah. you know, but, um, but, you know, obviously there's a lot of challenges that you can face when you're going into remarriage because you're dealing with things from the past, you know, you're mm. navigating something that's brand new and then you've got kiddos that are involved as well. So, um, can you guys just walk us through some, you know, just practical and spiritual steps maybe that people who are, you know, going into remarriage um, or who maybe are just in a hot season, they're in a wilderness season, they're in the fire season, like what is just some practical advice um, and spiritual advice that you would want to give or impart to them? Well, I think, I think the number one issue with a blended family, unfortunately, is always the children and they get blamed for a lot of the problems yeah. when they didn't ask for a divorce from their mom and dad. Um, they didn't, they didn't, or to be a part of a divorce, they didn't ask for a new family and here they're thrown into it and they're trying to navigate what's going on and every problem that's in the blended family gets blamed on the kids. Mm. I was a successful single mom before I met Mo, and he was a successful single dad before he met me. But when you put those two forces together, <laughs> you know, it's like, well, it has to be done my way versus it has to be done your way. A big issue. Mm. Uh, another issue that with blended families is scheduling. Mm -hmm. Just schedules can be so frustrating. You know, is Christmas Day going to be on Christmas Day? Yeah. Or is Christmas Day going to be a travel day because their other biological parent gets them at 1 p.m.? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all holidays are, are big issues and family traditions get thrown out the window and it's just, there's so many things that just keep piling up. Who's going to pay what bill? Yeah. Do, does, this, does this parent get child support and this one doesn't? So who's going to pay that bill? Yeah. And yeah. All of these things pile up and create issues in a blended family. And, and the way we address that is I have an opinion and Mo has an opinion. Mm. Yeah. And both of our opinions are right because there are opinions yeah so how can we meet in the middle and embrace each other's opinion let's just pause right there on opinions because what we real yeah. what we learned through the process of i need to embrace her opinion i need to be open and verse vice versa opinions are, are a part of our identity yeah. Mm -hmm. because they are formed from when we were children sure. mm -hmm. and how we were educated and how we, what our parents did and how what we our raised. parents did. Yeah. Yeah. And opinions can be a huge stumbling block if we don't respect each other's opinions. Yeah. And as far as bringing in um, children that want to be a part of our family, we had to, give some honor and respect to their opinions. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That it didn't always have to be the mom and dad opinion. And then the yeah. last thing that I, that just kind of clicked in my mind that 
is the whole discipline issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's really hard because we had different discipline techniques Mm -hmm. and ideas about discipline and, and how was that going to look? And Mm. he didn't agree with some of my discipline. I didn't agree with some of his discipline. And so then it, which is typical, typical. Yeah. yeah. So then it creates this, this prism of divide where you say, well, just let me discipline mine and you discipline yours. Mm. So where's, where's the family coming together now? Yeah. We've created two separate single parent families yeah. that are just coexisting under the same roof. So it's yeah. a lot of those issues come up and we hear them over and over and over again. Yeah. When we well, talk to couples. And one of the things that comes to mind is we know that the, the blended family dynamic can be challenging. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the things that, that we also see blended families do is judging their marriage based on how their blending is going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like if the kids are good, the marriage is good. If the kids are bad, the marriage is bad. Um, and I and I think that it's a little unfair to do that <laughs> in those situations because there are a lot more challenges that yeah. that uh, come in with a blended family that may not have a lot to do with your marriage. <laughs> and uh, and and keeping your marriage intact is so important in that situation. What advice or what nuggets of information would you give our audience that says, hey, this is how you keep your marriage strong when you're fighting battles outside your marriage? Um, I would have to say that there's no one point. Um, People used to ask us why, when, uh, what is the top three issues? And I said, there aren't top three issues. Mm -hmm. All of the issues are important. Yeah. yeah, you can't just pick out and deal with one, two, and three, mm. and lee and expect the others to take care of themselves. Yeah, and that's when we were really getting overwhelmed because it seemed like mm. everything was piling on us mm. at the same time, especially in the first four years. Yeah, yeah. One of the things we used to ask ourselves after we figured out some kind of normalcy before we wrote the book and we share it with other couples is is this a blended issue Mm -hmm. or is this a marriage issue? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we were dealing with the kids, is this a blended issue or is this because they're turning into teenagers? Yeah. A peer pressure pressure issue. Yeah. What's, what's the underlying issue? Because it's not always a blended family issue and we just lump it in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I think, uh, I think a lot of, families do exactly what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. They, they, they will put every issue they have around the fact that it's a blended family issue. You know, if there is an issue with the child, it's, well, it's because we're a blended family. Yeah. Uh, and they forget that, no, it's because they're 13 and yeah. they right. just are not making great decisions right now. <laughs> um, oh. So I a hundred percent agree with that one. Yeah. Well, I'll, say, I'll say this if I can. Um, there was a an issue that I had with one of Paige's girls, mm-hmm. and I um, was creating more more of that than there should have been. Mm. Uh, it's it was like we just were like oil and water mm-hmm. in the same room, and I realized one day that it was me and it wasn't mm. her. Mm. I had to come to the realization as the Holy Spirit just put things in my heart Mm. that I need to embrace her. I need to um, look out for her. I need to be interested in her and all that, all that and her entire world. Mm. And uh, we tried, I tried to start doing things with each of our children. Uh, I would do with Paige's girls um, taking them places. Uh, what do you want to go do today? And I take them there and mm-hmm. it's just, just connecting, Yeah, you know? Well, yeah, it's so good. talking about step parents and, mm-hmm. you know, and, and Mo, you touched on this and we're going to get you to expand on this yeah. because if you want to give us one piece of step parent, we're going to ask for two or three more, yeah. uh, <laughs> and Paige, you as well. I mean, understanding the step parenting <laughs> do's and don'ts, mm-hmm. uh, what works and what do you think you'd avoid? Yes. 
Well, the, the big thing, the do's and don'ts, the, the do's are love them as your own. And I know that's hard. When you, when you first get married, you really don't love them. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, it's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. Love is a decision Mm -hmm. to love. Um, It's not necessarily a feeling that just pops in one day. Yeah. Yeah. You, You have to work on that. And so the don't that goes with that is, is you don't have the right to discipline them Mm -hmm. until you love them. Mm. And And that comes from Hebrews 12, six, God disciplines those that he loves and he punishes those that he calls his sons. And the day that I read that, I had read that scripture so many times. Yeah. Mm. And the day, this one particular day that I read that it was the Holy spirit whispering in my ear, in my head, until you, love her as much as you love yourself and your own kids. Yeah. You don't have a right to discipline them. Yeah. That's good. Another don't is do not put your kids in the middle mm. of the divorce yeah. or divorce proceedings. If you don't have to, I realize sometimes that happens. Um, do not put them as the go between the messenger between the two Mm-hmm. Adults that should be that should be talking, mm. and and don't talk about their spouse. Don't I mean yeah. sorry their their former parent. Yeah. Don't talk about their former parent. You might not like them, mm-hmm. but that person will always be their parent, yeah. and you can't change that. Yeah. And and so if you have a grievance, <clears throat> take it to a private area. Yeah. Yeah. You talk about it, but don't talk about it in front of the kids. Instead, do special things with the kids. Have fun with them. Enjoy them. Take them out on mm. on vacation. Take them. Uh, we we used to go fishing when we lived in New Orleans. And mm. so we would go on fishing trips. And let me tell you, fishing with Barbie dolls and big wheel yeah. trucks and <laughs> everything in the boat, you know, um, we had everything. Everybody yeah. could bring a toy. So, um, and everybody got a chance to fish and poor Mo didn't fish. He was just unhooking the fish. Pretty but, much. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but enjoy them, have fun with them. Um, I looked at it as I, I was raising a part of this man and I loved him. Mm-hmm. And so I was raising a piece of him. Mm-hmm. And, and when I came to that conclusion, it was easier to not worry about what the other parent does yeah. and how they discipline at the other house. Yeah. They have discipline everywhere. Every coach, football coach, soccer coach, cheerleader coach, um, baseball grandma's coach, house. grandma's house, <laughs> yeah. neighbor's house. Everybody has a different set of rules. Every teacher has a different set of rules. Yeah. So quit fighting the rules of that's another don't quit fighting the rules yeah. Yeah. and just realize they have different rules. It's just another set. They'll be okay. Yeah. yeah. They'll, they'll survive. And so will you. Um, another, another don't is, and I think this is a big one is, do not share adult stuff with mm-hmm. your children. That's good. Whether yeah. it's your children or your stepchildren. And, yeah. and we hear that a lot. Um, do, you, do you know what your mom did to me? Yeah. yeah. Um, so many parents want their child to get on the same level. So that they, can be, yeah. they can be friends. They want to, be, they want to befriend their child. So the quickest way to do that, well, it's an alliance. Yeah, they want an alliance. Yeah. you know, they want their child to understand what they see as reality, and right. mm-hmm. they, and then, and then you kind of have a competing spirit because the child wants to grow up too. They want to grow up fast. You know, mm-hmm. you get them to those teenage years and like, I, t- treat me like an adult. Well, they're not, and mm-hmm. they can't understand. Yeah. emotionally what an adult understands. Yeah. So I I love that you said that. I Mm -hmm. love that. And I hope people in our audience hear that. Yeah. Is children need to be children Mm -hmm. and treat them as such and talk to them as such. I really really appreciate this whole discussion because 
that children are a vital, vital, vital part of each and every family. Absolutely. And they want to be included. Mm -hmm. They may not act like they want to be included. And we've had many couples come to us and say, how do I get my stepchild to respect me? Mm -hmm. And they're equating respect with obedience. Yeah. And obedience is uh, following the commands of respect is to hold in high esteem is two totally different mm -hmm. things. It's good. But the parent, uh, step parents lump it together and say, well, if they're not obeying me, mm -hmm. they don't respect me. Mm -hmm. The word respect um, is something that we well, one thing we have to realize about respect is we have to earn it, yeah. even with our children and stepchildren. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if that doesn't happen, that relationship is not going to grow. Yeah. No, that's so. And then, and then just the very last don't, and we don't have to elaborate. I think people will know exactly what I'm talking about is don't use social media to air out your grievances. Mm. Even, about it, other, sister. Amen. <laughs> even about the other, the other parent, their other biological parent, do not use social media mm -hmm. to air out those grievances. It's not the place and it's not the time. There's a whole podcast just right there. That. Yes. Right there. Uh, Absolutely. Totally. I, I think you're right. We'll just we'll just drop that one at the, yeah. at the door here. Mike, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, Mike drop yeah. right there. No, that's so good. Well, and I, you know, you know, to your point, Paige, you know, what we were what you were talking about just before that, you know, you have to establish, you know, when you were talking about Mo, the obedience and the respect in that it's the establishment of trust. And if you don't mm. have that, like if you can't, you know, I'm trying to look at it as a child. I grew up in a blended family. So it was like I had to learn and really trust my step back, stepfather before I would really be obedient to what he was asking me to do. And, and through the obedience, that's where I became blessed. And he did, too. You know, like you were talking about the respect. Um, mm -hmm. and just growing in a stronger relationship with him. And so, you know, and that's something that we teach in our class. It's, you know, establishing that trust factor is so important um, yeah. from the beginning. Well, and, and I, I don't want to just drop a, a couple things here because I don't want people who are listening to hear that without having an action item yeah. to go, well, how do I establish trust with my stepchild? Mm. Um, and, I, and I think we can, you can be very purposeful in this in mm -hmm. basically trust is established especially with a child is when you tell them you're going to do something do it mm -hmm. and it, follow through exactly the follow through and you can be intentional about that if you know you can go ahead and say you will and then do um, it will there's nothing wrong with taking intentional steps to build trust and i think that step parents can do that and if they do that consistently mm -hmm. they're going to find that there's their relationship so i hope just Take that action advice with you. Absolutely. Uh, Good. Well, guys, um, what encouragement or advice would you give blended families? I know you've just given a ton, but if you had to narrow it down to just being like, you know, here and here, what advice would you give a blended family that's in a, you know, tumultuous season? My, my The first one that comes to my mind, and then I know Mo will say something, is um, give it time. Mm. Yeah. Give it time. Uh, one of the things that we realized after we had some very bad years, and then we realized we had to back up and do it all over again. We had to undo the damage. And one of the, one of the things we realized is that when Mo and I got married, he he had a relationship with his daughter for for 15 years that I didn't have. Mm. So I couldn't expect her to respect me or honor me or trust me in an instant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He had a lot of, of years of relationship building mm -hmm. and vice versa. I had, I had a 10 year old and I had 10 years on him mm. with my relationship with that daughter. And so it takes time and the kids need time. They, they really do. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Mo, what would you say? I would say a couple of things. One is 
Prayer is so powerful. Yes, absolutely. It changes. We we usually pray for someone for us. Yeah. <laughs> Send them to China, God, because yeah. we don't want to deal with them anymore, right? Right. <laughs> or change their heart or do right. this in them when all along God is really wanting me to pray for them for them mm -hmm. and me for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. He wants to make some improvements and some changes in my life that are destructive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to stop the destruction. And that's why Paige said we had to back up and repair relationships yeah. Yeah. before we could really move on. So an example, just a quick quick example of that prayer would be instead of saying, God, please change them. Mm. Please, please uh just keep them out of our path mm -hmm. because we're not getting along. Yeah. It would be God, bring them peace. Mm. Yeah. Show them the love of God, <laughs> if not through me, through somebody else. Yeah. Bring them to the cross. So I'm praying that prayer for them, not for me. Yeah. No. They had we had an a, example. There was a church teaching our material. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that in the in the prayer. Uh, chapter. Um, we challenged them that whatever, whoever was a hindrance in, in their family, that they would pray for them, for them. And we would, we asked them to do it at least for a week or, yeah. or two weeks. Yeah. Mm. And we got a call back from that, the leaders of that group that we had talked to this one girl whose, hus whose former husband was always uh, tearing her down. Mm -hmm. uh, she couldn't do anything right in his mm -hmm. eyes. Mm -hmm. And she said, I've been praying that for that man for seven years. And I said, change your prayer. Mm -hmm. Pray for him, for him, for God to bless him, for God to mm -hmm. increase him. And she said, okay, I'm going to try it. And, and we got a call in less than a week yeah. that that guy had called her up her and she former was, husband. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, here we go again. I'm going to get, I'm going to get the whole she, tearing down yeah. again. Yeah. And, and he said, look, uh, this is such and such. And I just want to tell you that you're a great mom and you're doing a great job with our kids. Oh, and she awesome. was like staring at her phone. Yeah. <laughs> like, who, who is this? Who, is this? <laughs> who am yeah. I talking to? What did you have for lunch? So it does work. <laughs> it's a prayer that works. It's not always easy, but it works. And the, the outcome of that is so important. Yeah. About two weeks later, we get another call that that guy got shot and killed. <gasps> the former spouse. But he, I'm convinced that he's in heaven today because he had a complete yeah. change of heart. Mm -hmm. Wow. wow. Great and story. can you imagine what the funeral would have been for our, for her, for their kids? Yeah. Knowing that they had reconciled and that they had some peace mm -hmm. yeah. amongst themselves. Yeah. Well, yeah. And that right there is just a testament of, you know, and we talk about the, the, mm -hmm. the power of prayer, you know, and, and that is our mm -hmm. weapon against the enemy and the evil forces in the darkness, you know, that yeah. comes against us. And we have to remember, it's not flesh and blood that we're battling. It's not your ex-spouse. Right. It is, yeah. it is a spiritual warfare. And so, you know, one of the things I've said before is if you think that your ex-spouse or even if it's someone in your blended family is the enemy, then you've been deceived by the deceiver because it, mm. you know, God has given us these people, you know, mm. um, and, and it's not them, but again, it's the, um, it's, it's the evil forces. And yeah. And, the spiritual battle is very real. Yeah. And, and I don't think enough people, I don't think enough people actually realize where it comes from. Mm -hmm. So they don't know where to go fight it. Yeah. They right. just don't know. They, they look at their spouse or their ex-spouse or their, their kids or whatever's going on. Yeah. And they forget, they forget what's going on is, is that Satan hates marriage. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he yeah. wants to yeah. destroy marriage. He wants yeah. to destroy families. Yeah. And if he can get to you and get to your kids, he can get to the next generation and get to the next generation. So yeah. Absolutely. you're not fighting people. You're, you're fighting and, and, and prayer is the weapon. Well, and that story is a good example of if you're listening or watching this today, you know, if you have grievances with your ex-spouse or with someone in your family, mm. take it to God, 
change that prayer, just like you were talking about, Mo, and and get right, get right with God and, and go to them. You guys, it says in scripture in the book of James, you know, life, it's, it's but a vapor. I mean, it is like this and we do not know, like you said, Mo, that guy, he was shot and killed two weeks later. I mean, you just don't know, yeah. um, you know, to, and, and to, and to try to make peace. Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah. Well, guys, your wisdom is amazing. I wish that we could get this entire book out yeah. and maybe we will, we will, we will bring you on again and we'll talk deeper about other stuff. <laughs> yeah. uh, sure. But we love that your heart for blended families again, can't stress it enough. Their book, God breathes on blended families is an absolute game changer. If you haven't read it, please grab it. Yes. Our last question to our guest is always the same. Blended kingdom families. What is a blended kingdom family to you? A blended kingdom kingdom family to me is one that's based on Christ. Mm-hmm. It's it's having the your family is on a firm foundation. Amen. And when the storms come, they come, but your home is safe, your family is safe. Yeah. yeah. And that to me, that's what a blended kingdom family is. I love it's it. It's all about giving God the praise and glory Amen. that that everyone in your family is special to God. So they're special to you too. Amen. So good. It's that foundation. And then the, uh, the, my thought is we have a tagline um, on some, in some of our articles and it's all families are built one relationship at a time. Yeah. And there may be uh, some families that are having issues with, within the family. Yeah. And if they would just start investing in those kids in the, the former, uh, the former spouse, yeah. whether it's in uh, the uh, pay, like Paige's parents, what am I trying to say? Yeah. <laughs> uh, extended, extended family. family. Yeah. 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 That can be extended family issues. Mm-hmm. And if we would just embrace each one of those mm-hmm. as a part of your new community, yeah. And just invest your life in each one of those hearts. Yeah, a kingdom is a community. So yeah. as, much, as hard as it can be, you have to you have to embrace everyone. Yeah. Absolutely. Now that Love is so it. good. And you guys, thank you again so much for sharing your heart with us today. Um, and you know, you know, a little bit about your book and um, just your nuggets of wisdom. We just we honor you guys. I mean, and when I yeah. say literally like this was this was the first blended family book that I picked up and read that I mean just like I was like you got to read this. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so, you know, just thank you for your obedience to to do this because it has blessed our lives and we know that it's going to bless so many more. Um so thank you guys so much. And we just want to thank our viewers today. Thank you guys for, you know, um, tuning in with us. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast yet, please do so on our YouTube channel. You can also click the notifications bell and it will tell you when we have a new podcast release. Also, you guys, if you've not left us a review on our um, podcast, you can get on there, leave, leave us a review. Tell us what you're liking about the podcast, anything that you want to hear from us. We want to give a shout out to Amy Michelle. Um, she said that this podcast is so hope filled and gives so many practical and spiritual tips on how to have a healthy blended kingdom family. Highly recommend um, and worth subscribing to. Thank you, Amy, Michelle. Um, You guys, we love you all so much. And thank you for being here with us today. Be blessed in all that you do. Have a great day. Hey, BKF community. We want to hear from you guys. If you would take the time to leave us a review and you can find us on all social media platforms. Our podcast is like on every podcast platform. And you can visit us at our website at www.blendedkingdomfamilies.com. Yeah, guys, we're trying to reach every blended family all over the world. And we can't do this without your partnership. So please take a minute, like, share, comment, review, tell your friends. Tell them they can all go to blendedkingdomfamilies.com for great resources.